Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're talking about the top baits for bass fishing in the month of March. I love bass fishing in March. March is my month. There's giant fish to be caught. There's numbers of fish to be caught. The pre-spawn is happening. Bass are moving shallower and shallower and shallower. Big bass are following suit. You can go out and catch a bunch of fish and then you can turn around and catch the biggest bass of your life. March is amazing. Now there is some carryover in terms of baits from February. Some of the baits are the same. They'll be the same in April. But there are some add-ins in March that we weren't throwing before because the water is warming up and more fish are coming shallow. So there are some more really fun, fun ways to catch them. I've actually got six categories for you today, not five. I tried to get it down to five. It's gonna be six. The first one is one that we haven't thrown since fall. And that's the chatterbait. The chatterbait is incredibly effective this time of year. It gives a great profile in the water. It's a large profile, but it's also got a ton of vibration, a ton of sound, and that is a package that just gets big bites. I've got a couple options for you. The main one being the jackhammer. I mean, the jackhammer is the bread and butter of chatterbait fishing, but I've also got the mini max if you are fishing a smaller fishery uh, a fishery where the fish tend to be a little smaller maybe they top out at like five or six pounds i smash with that little mini max i pair it up to the smaller size of the big bite swim on and that has just been such a deadly bait for me but day in and day out if i was going to choose one it would be a jackhammer paired up to a spunk shad. This is a 4.5, this is a 5.5. The spunk shad is an unbelievable bait. You've seen it in underwater footage. You've seen the way it dances, it moves. You can fish a chatterbait just chucking and winding like it's a spinnerbait or a crankbait, just going down the bank mindlessly and you will catch fish. But the magic with a chatterbait comes when you start popping and working that reel and getting those movements out of that bait and that spunk shad is incredibly effective when you're doing that now in march you can face all kinds of conditions if you're in super dingy water you know you get a bunch of rain all that water comes running into the lake turns to chocolate milk water rises the fish will go dirt shallow in that muddy muddy water that's where fire craw shines that is when that thing smashes fish. It's a great color, but if that water starts to clear up, that's not what you wanna be throwing. You'll see me switch over to like a green pumpkin shad or one of the cleaner, clearer colors. But a lot of times, if you wanna get a big bite, there's just something to be said about a black and blue or about a bruised green pumpkin. That is such an effective big bass color, especially in off-colored water, not muddy water, but just dingy water or tannic water that a lot of anglers face. That's an amazing color. Now, the spunk shad. So Hog Farmer makes the spunk shad and they actually came out with some new colors this year that are unreal. Like their electric shad is mind blowing. They have some awesome new colors that you need to look at. In the video description, We'll link all the baits in the order we talk about them. We'll give you our favorite size, specific colors we like to throw, everything to help you narrow it down. Uh, I'll also link this guy because in addition to Hog Farmer coming out with new colors, they also licensed the Spunk Shad to Missile Baits who came out with some of their other, their own colors. And some of them are gnarly. Like look at that one. It's got that bright blue in the belly, but still a black tail. I mean, it looks good. I'm very impressed with those colors as well. There's a bunch of new pairings you will see me do in the spring with all these new baits that are coming out. But the chatterbait, that's number one. Number two is going to be a lipless crankbait. A lipless, that's a repeat from February. When I throw a lipless this time of year, you can be 
chucking and winding, cover and water as fish move up on flats. We also like to bottom hop these baits. You just pull the rod and they flutter up and then you let them fall back to bottom. Flutter up, fall back to bottom. There's two baits that stand out from the crowd for us when we do this technique. One is the Lucky Craft LV500. The other is the Jackal TN70. If you watch our footage a lot, neither of these is a surprise to you whatsoever. Uh, we throw them in a handful of colors, you know, a bright, bold color, a nice shad looking color, and then some sort of a craw color. Uh, that's about all there is to it. We mix those colors up until we find the one they want to eat on a given day. But the key to these two baits is that they're much heavier and much smaller than the average lipless. The average lipless in a three quarter ounce is a pretty big bait. These guys are little tiny. That allows us to fish that smaller package effectively on the bottom because they crash back to bottom. After they flutter up, they crash back. And that fall rate, that's part of the key to their success. That's why those fish eat them so well. So specifically that LV500 and that TN70 are just amazing this time of year. Third category, jerk baits. I love, you're gonna hear me say I love and then fill the blank a bunch. I love March, I love these baits, I love these new colors. This is an awesome time of year to be on the water. Fishing a jerk bait this time of year is a riot. It's fun, jerk bait fishing's fun anytime, but this time of year is when you get aggressive with it. Really hitting those baits, working them hard, getting a lot of flash, a lot of sound, a lot of movement and that draws those strikes. So I want baits that are extremely aggressive. Got two for you. This is the Shimano World Minnow. See the flash boost in there moving even when my hand is not? That is key. I like baits that throw a lot of flash and a lot of light. This bait, you dart and then you stop and that continues to shine and throw light and it will get bites when other baits won't. The second one, is the Jackal Re-Range. This is a bait we've thrown for years. Both of these baits, but particularly the Re-Range, particularly the Re-Range, it's thinner in the belly than the back. As a result, when you rip this bait, we've seen it in underwater footage, when you rip it, the bait wants to roll way to the side. So it doesn't just dart and move, it rolls as it darts. The result is that it just throws light. To me, that equals more drawing power. I've seen it outfish other baits time and time again. Both of these are very loud baits. They move a lot of water, a lot of flash. You can be really aggressive with them, cause a huge commotion with them, and the fish just come out of the woodwork to smash them. You also notice bright, bold colors. I start with bold colors this time of year. Other times of year, I'll start with very natural, very subtle colors and then adapt from there. Not now. Now is when I want bright, bold, obnoxious. I want those fish to react and to commit. I only go natural if the water is super clear. If you're in a highland reservoir, 10, 15, 20 feet of viz, that's a different deal you go to those softer, duller colors. But if you're not, if you've got zero viz, you throw the brightest, boldest color you can get your hand on. If you've got two to five, two to six feet of viz, that's the magic. You use those bright, bold, obnoxious colors and you can load the boat. So much fun. All right, next up, we're just working in a circle here. Shallow cranks, square bills. I keep it really simple. This time of year, my main focus is on red baits. I just have, personally, have a ton of confidence in red and orange crankbaits this time of year. Uh, this little guy right here, that Spro Little John, that's my subtle bait. I throw that in that blood craw color, that clear red, tons of confidence. Because again, you can be faced with a variety of conditions in March. Sometimes, even in March, the conditions are garbage. Post-frontal, something happens, the fish just don't want to eat. You'll see me throwing that guy right there. It's smaller, 
flat-sided, tighter vibration, less sound, it's not so obnoxious, and I can catch fish on the bad days. But on the good days, you're gonna see me throw in something like a River to Sea Biggie with a 13 fishing scamp. These baits are loud. The Biggie, that's been my main bait in the spring for years. The scamp is even louder. Listen to that. This one's loud. This one's crazy loud. Both very, very effective baits in spring. Most days I want bold, obnoxious, loud baits. Now, depending on water color, you'll see me with those more muted reds versus those brighter, bolder red oranges. That's how I decide. How dark is my water color? Same thing with the chatterbait, right? Sometimes you're gonna see me here, sometimes you're gonna see me bright, bold, obnoxious. It's water color. Next up, swim baits. I'm gonna keep it really simple for you. Big fish are making moves in March. They're moving up, they're feeding up before they spawn. They like to get up into the shallows and feed aggressively. So I focus on baits that can be fished around cover very effectively. Two options for you. First one is the Mega Bass Mag Draft. That is a bait that catches giants. Specifically, if I could choose for you, I will give you all the encouragement I can to focus on the eight inch instead of the six inch. There's nothing wrong with the six inch. They will smash it but your odds of catching a monster, catching a fish of a lifetime, that's higher on the eight inch. And this is that month where you really can get that fish. So I'm just encouraging you to go bigger. Commit to that bigger bait, throw that large profile. The beauty of a mag draft is that there's a lot of big fish moving shallow. They'll be up on secondary points. They'll be on edges of flats. They're in places that are easy to reach and the mag draft is a bait that has a sweet speed. So you throw it out, start winding it back. If you go too fast, it'll start to blow out. If you go too slow, it's muted. Speed up, slow down on the side of the boat until you see that perfect kick. You'll find that speed where it's got beautiful tail kick and it's got a head wobble to it. So it's got the tail going and then you got head wobble too. That secondary action gets really big bites. Once you found that sweet speed, you can't screw it up. You just run likely places. Throw it across secondary points. Go to the backs of coves leading into bays. Throw it out there, wind it back. Don't worry about it. It's not like a chatterbait where you're popping and working the reel and trying to dance it and get extra action. This is just slow rolling. The hard part is telling your brain this will work. The fishing, mindless. You just throw it out there and wind it back until a giant bass goes dunk on the end of your line. That's all there is to it. Take the time and commit to it. Now that said, the S waiver, a glide bait, the smaller S waiver, the 168 actually, here I'm telling you go bigger, here I'm telling you go smaller. But the reason is very simple. Fish that are pulling up into these shallows will like to get up against cover. I'm taking that mag draft, I'm covering water with it. If I get on, say, fishing docks, fish right up tight to the bank on laydowns where they're in the cover, then the S waiver is a more effective way to get them out. The S waiver I use with a lot more twitches. There's a right and a wrong way to fish this bait. Slow and steady, four handle turns, and then add two twitches. This hand never stops. Four handle turns, two twitches. The bait will swim and then cut, cut, and then go right back to swimming. It draws fish. The fish will come out of shallow cover and when you do those cuts, they'll ambush it. It works incredibly effectively. Swim it right up to a dock piling and then right after you pass the piling, give it those twitches. If there's a fish looking, that's when they'll hit it. It's very effective for pulling big fish out of specific pieces of cover. And then last, but certainly not least, is the A-Rig. You'll notice this is all power fishing. It's not that you can't slow down. It's not that you can't smash them on uh, a Senko or a shaky head or a jig. You can. 
But power fishing is fun. You can cover water and you can catch monsters. The A-Rig is an incredibly effective way to catch big fish. Now this is specifically our mini flex rig, the downsized rig, smaller baits. Now this is a specific bait I wanna talk about. This is the X-Zone Swammer. You usually see us throwing Kitex on our rigs, uh, which we still do. I mean, the 4.8 Kitex on our full-size flex rig is unreal. We've caught so many giant fish on that. Uh, I mean, already this year, you guys saw Tim catch an 11 pounder on it, right? We're constantly catching big fish on those, but I'm always looking for baits that are different because everyone throws a Kitex. The Swammer is a bait I threw for years and then somehow I got away from it. And recently I put it on a rig and was blown away. I had switched out a bait or I had a Kitex got ripped up. I put a Swammer in its place in the middle of Kitex, threw it out, swam it on the side of the boat and was like, oh my gosh. This bait where a Kitex has like that slow thump, this guy has a faster kick plus body roll. There is so much more going on. This rig, the mini flex, up top I've got three Demiki armor shads, my small baits. Down below I put a four inch as my main bait and then two three and a halves as my outside, out my outside baits. That package has so much kick, so much movement, so much vibration. It's a downsized package with more action that the fish aren't used to seeing. And that is a deadly, deadly setup. And look at that electric shad. I mean, it looks, that whole rig looks unreal. It's so good. But rig fishing this time of year can be amazing. I use three one eighth ounce heads. All my heads are the same. They're an eighth. So it's a total of three eighths of an ounce between the three heads. It's not heavy. I throw it on a seven six medium heavy rod. Can throw it on 15 to 20 pound line. I'm able to fish this thing so effortlessly. I can throw it up in two, three foot of water on flats and fish it up high because the eight ounce heads don't sink very quickly, but I can also slow it down and fish it effectively out to 10 or 15 feet of water. Uh, those three one eight ounce heads are key for me in the springtime. I've lost track of how many monster fish we've caught on that setup. And then again, in this downsized mini flex, it's money. Not that there's anything wrong with big rigs. It just seems like more and more people are throwing rigs. I throw a big rig a ton, but on the days where I'm throwing it and I'm getting short strikes, or I look around and I see everybody's throwing a rig, I go to a mini flex to get more bites. Guys, with that, we've hit our six categories. March is an amazing time of year to be on the water. Again, like every video, in the video description, we'll link everything, favorite sizes, favorite colors, any rigging components you need to know to be effective, we'll put all that down there for you. In every video we do, there's more information in the video description than in the actual video. That's just the way it is. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.